Hey, it is uh, Friday 20th, January 20th, and um, yeah, rough week. Lost David Crosby this week, or just just yesterday, <laughs> I think just yesterday. Um, and uh, boy, it made some of those songs, some great tunes of his ran through my head. It's uh, another one. Anyway, uh, that's, a, that's a, only a third of that song was his, of course. That was mostly a still song. but uh, And then a lot of other great tunes um, related. Uh-oh, can, can I figure this out? Of course, another Nash tune, but really became famous when they were together. Anyway, okay, um, boy, I might, I might wander off. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. A um, little bit of excitement around here yesterday. We had a big flo a coptercade fly right nearby. Now, not for a great reason. It was because uh, the, our coast has been pretty well destroyed, and uh, so the president came by, came out to Northern California yesterday, and uh, there was a lot of noise as a bunch of big helicopters flew from Moffett Field, which is that way, kind of a little bit north, northwest of here to Watsonville, which is a little bit southeast of here. So, yeah, it was kind of cool to see these slow-moving, well, they're probably really fast-moving, but from as far away as we were, they looked, looked like they were moving slow. So that was kind of exciting. Um, Oh, and the other kind of excitement is, you know, I, I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I'm kind of getting, getting into the, uh, the Dan Hicks kick. So there's a few more of those under construction. I hope some of you had a chance to take a look at.
I'm running out of frets. Okay. Um, so that was, again, a little unusual set of scales being used in I, I Scare Myself. And um, let's see. I think there was one more thing I was going to talk about. And I didn't have really too much too much on the agenda today. Um, oh, you know, Crosby, uh, they, they, I think it was 1973, which was like the height of when I was like on top of what was coming out in music. Um, I believe Brothers and Sisters came out that same year. Probably... Um, not Seventh so yeah, I think it was Seventh Sojourn. It was probably around that same year. That could have been 72. This was David's take on Neil's, Neil Young's tune. D minor probably. Anyway, they turned it into a country thing. If you haven't heard that, the birds version of Cowgirl in the Sand was more, it was really country. Just a, C's and a, a minors back and forth instead of the traditional A minor and F that Neil Young used, of course. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Let me see if I can remember another. Oh, should I try this with a pick? Nah, let me think about this. I remember a lot of his tunes used unusual chords and weren't necessarily difficult to play, but just unusual. I mean, and he, this is how he also built um, tunes in, in um, open tunings or in alternate tunings like Guinevere and Deja Vu, and a lot of them are in, in different tunings. And um, which meant he usually wasn't doing anything too complicated. Now he of course learned this from Joni Mitchell, who had been doing that already by the time they met. So he stumbled into this a couple of cool chords here and turned this into a very controversial song. this song if you're not familiar with it um, these chords are just ninth chords minor ninth chords and a standard ninth chord oh that's this be today's tip oh yeah I was gonna save that one for later so never mind I'll disregard what I'm gonna say um, if you have not played much in the way of ninth chords they um, we typically have the uh, E family and the A family that we build bar chords out of right we got three, five five important shapes out of both of those the, the E family and the A family and the five shapes you should know for all of them are major, minor, seven, minor seven, and major seven. And then if you have to play an A flat major seven, you just know I have to use the E major seven shape and take it to the fourth fret, and I've got an A flat major seven chord. Nothing to it. Um, but ninth chords are a little bit of a different animal because there isn't a good way to play them out of, at least out of the A family, but there is a good way to play them with the root on the fifth string based on a B7 chord. Now B is a different shape than A. It's not really part of, the, there's, you can of course play B chords out of the A family. B, B minor, B minor seven, B major seven, etc. Um, but B7 is a really handy shape that is not quite movable until we make it a ninth chord by adding, by changing the note on the first string, the F sharp, let's get rid of it, and move it to the ninth of the chord, which is C sharp on the second string. 
Now I can play these four middle strings, and I've got a ninth chord, B9. And so the root is again on the fifth string of this, so we kind of think of it as related to the A family, but it's different. Um, so there's our B9, and you can make this more strummable if you can make a hinge bar out of your third finger and get all three strings, the top three strings. You'll hear this in jazzy stuff all the time. 12 bar blues in G would be G7, C9, G7, C9 again, G7, D9, C9, G7. So a little swingy 12 bar blues there, just using essentially those three chords, but sliding in and out of the ninth chords on the fifth string. Now, so that C9 here, what I have is the root on the fifth string and the third, the E, on the fourth string. So if I want to make it minor, I just have to lower that third. Now that makes it this a bit of a stretch down here, and it's easier if you're not trying to play the top three strings and if you're only going to if you're going to be okay with just two. And so now it's not quite as big a stretch, but I've got the, a C, an E flat, a B flat, and a D. And this can be moved around. This is a minor ninth chord at any fret I take it to as long as I don't play the first string or the sixth string. But by the time I get it to the seventh fret, it's an E. Now I can use the E's. And there's where Crosby got the idea for triad. He just found this cool chord that he probably didn't know was a minor ninth chord. And then he just moved it up a whole step, which is really dissonant. So essentially we've got an E minor 9 followed by an F sharp minor 9, but with E in the bass. And then he built this, put this beautiful melody together. find the melody there. Interesting, it's almost the same chord in uh, the Lee Shore. It's an E minor 9 again, and with A in the bass. Different way of playing, a different way of playing E minor 9. It is sort of like a B minor chord where I'm just playing the B, the D on the second string, and the F sharp on the fourth string. So I've got three notes that seem to be out of a B minor chord. They're B, D, F sharp. Those happen to be the fifth, seventh, and ninth of an E minor chord. So the fact that I've got an E and a G in this, I've got a five note chord. E, G, B, D, F sharp, E minor nine. Okay, ah, I think that's it for today. Um, yeah. Hopefully, next week, you'll have a chance to look at some of the new tunes that we are working on, and uh, we'll be back with other thoughts, I'm sure.